Today, we're going to dive into the future of browsing, and we're talking about the brand new, shiny, absolutely mind-bending OpenAI browser called Atlas. And that's right, it is by OpenAI, and it is their brand new browser. So let me tell you about this browser. It is not just another browser, it is an AI-first browser. So it is filled with AI features. And you can see right now, we have the agent able to do different things for us. So it is actually shopping on Walmart and it is looking for recipes and it's adding ingredients into our cart. It's figuring out a script for YouTube and it is also searching and trying LLM Arena, trying to get the new Gemini model. But here's the thing, it's really good at AI, not so good at being a browser. And we're gonna get to that later on in this video, but let's first look at all the really cool AI features that they added. So you can see here, our plan for our YouTube video is done and it gives us everything we need. Very similar to what ChatGPT can already do. We have our Walmart order and you can see it actually says, hey, we need to retry the cookie message and we have to close the cookies. And you can actually see it is searching for garlic powder right now as we speak. And it is going to start adding these things to our cart. So it knows the recipe. It's able to shop for all the items and save us a lot of time. Let's go back and let's check out some of the other things that are going on. And these are agents that are built into the browser. So we have this one here with LLM Arena or the Web Dev Arena. And my prompt for this was to create a single file Angry Birds inspired game and I want a menu screen. And it is the entire prompt I generally use. So you can see here when we open up a new tab, this is our main browsing experience. We have agent mode. We have all sorts of different things we can do. It's not your normal ChatGPT experience. The integration is built in with the browser itself. So for example, here we said, hey, what have I done on my browser today? And it is able to search through something called browser memories. It is able to find all the information that we have looked up. So this browser literally came out just today. So I don't have a lot of browser history, but I was looking at 3D printing. I was looking at Gemini 3. I was looking at some other things on the web. So you can actually see all the different things I did on my browser today. And that's just through something called snapshots. So it is basically using the browser history and building a snapshot for us. And that alone isn't very interesting because it's just history and it's not the coolest, but we can actually say, hey, can you bring up all the tabs that we closed for our 3D printing session or whatever we want to do? So we can actually go back like a week or two weeks or whatever we want to do. And we can say, hey, can you pull up all this information? And it is able to pull up those tabs for us. So let's just kind of flip back. We have our Angry Birds clone here. And there's a lot of things going on in this browser all at once. We can actually see all the tabs came up. But on the left, we have Angry Birds and uh, we can see what it looks like. On the right, we have a broken version of Angry Birds. And hey, the left is actually indeed Gemini 3. The right is Claude Haiku 4.5. So you can see broken versus actual working. And if you subscribe, and I definitely recommend you to subscribe, I have a full video on Gemini 3.0 tomorrow. But you can see here, this is Angry Birds on Gemini 3, or at least the supposed Gemini 3. We can go back to our Walmart order and we can actually see what happened here. And again, I just kind of left this going in the background. And now we have every single ingredient we need. We have our total $43. And on the right, we can actually see our last minute chicken recipe. We can see all the ingredients. And I honestly just told it to give me a chicken recipe and it tells us how to do it. So that's pretty cool. If we come back to here, we can actually see all the tabs that it opened up from our browsing session and we can see the different ones. So we don't actually lose any data or any information. Our tabs just kind of come back. So all of this is really, really cool and the AI is phenomenal, but how about it as an actual web browser? And that is where I think it starts to falter a little. So sure, we have the left sidebar and it's very much ChatGPT and it gives you some information along the bottom. You can also type in your URL and it will bring up the website. So here we typed in Wikipedia and it knows wikipedia.org, we can do that. But if we didn't know the URL, the exact URL, we can type in Wikipedia and it's going to give us a ChatGPT search suggestion card. And you can see it gives us all sorts of information. It is not the traditional web links you know and love. So that's not bad, but it's also not great. So what if it's something you don't know exactly, and maybe you're typing up Franklin A, you can see the links at the top, but then it's gonna actually go through and give you a lot of information that's not actually relevant to anything to do with what you're actually searching. So it's not as good as perplexity for search, 
but it's kind of like the main central focus point. You can also click web and you can see all the links, but that's another extra click. And then you can also click images and you'll see that there are a select number of images. So you're not getting a large selection here and you can't go beyond that. Sure. There is a Google link and you can click that to expand, but that's pretty much what it is. Let's talk about more traditional features that are on browsers. So bookmarking, for example, the bookmarking isn't inherently obvious. So I actually tried ask ChatGPT and said, hey, can you bookmark this for me? And you're going to see at the top, it actually did bookmark the Wikipedia link and you can see it. But that's pretty much it. You can't drag and drop this anywhere. You can't really do anything with that link in the tab bar. You can also highlight the URL at the top, which again, it just kind of blends in. You can both bookmark it that way, but look at the link. I'm going to try to drag it into the folder and you just can't do it. You can add a folder, but there's no way to drag the links in. So it's like a half baked bookmark system in the browser. So while they have all these really cool AI features, the actual browser functionality just isn't there. The bookmark system is broken. There's no way to add a quick home button for whatever home you want. You're stuck with the new tab system and you can't actually go back home anywhere. So while you can adjust the browser accent color and you can see it at the top bar and it's really dull, but the actual settings kind of seem broken. So if we go to settings, you're going to see here. So we have this little cool badge along the top and that's kind of cool. But if we scroll down, there's going to be a ton of different settings that we can access. And all of these settings are going to open up their own page. So you can see the list here. We click one. It's not like an integrated settings menu. So it kind of seems like they use Chromium. They broke it up. They added AI features and then they're slowly building things things on top and they focus so much on AI, they kind of forgot the entire browser aspect. Now, this next use case I want to show you is if you're on a YouTube video of this beautiful gentleman right here, we can click has chat GPT and now we can actually ask it questions about this video. So that's kind of cool. They give you these preset prompts and some of them are really helpful. So we can say, hey, can you just tell me about this or whatever you want to learn more about? And it will tell you these prompts and you can see it will give you back an answer. So you can actually get a quick summary of a YouTube video and you can get that instantly. It's very fast to do. And that's pretty helpful because you can do this on any single web page. Now, if we go back to my Wikipedia example for a moment, you will see that we can actually ask it, hey, can you make us a quiz? And it will generate a quiz based off everything that's on the page. And the ChatGPT Atlas page doesn't have a lot on it, but you can actually see the list of quiz options that you're given and actually gives you the answers right after the quiz question. Again, this isn't a big deal because you can just quickly change the prompt and say, hey, put the answers at the bottom so you don't see them right away. So while the preset prompts are kind of useful and the whole concept is useful, I feel like they need to be tweaked a little to make them more functional for everyday use. While I see the whole like vision behind having ChatGPT in your browser all the time where you can ask it questions, the agent can do things and it doesn't do it fantastic. I'm going to show you an example of that in just a moment. Where it really lacks is the actual browser functionality. Now, this next example here is Chrome extensions. So I thought it was actually kind of clever. I'm like, hey, can you find me the must have Chrome extensions based on my history, based off things I would like, based off things I would use. And before I set up this browser, before I set up Atlas, I actually had to import all my history, all my Chrome information right into the browser. So it has all of that as a baseline. So it actually had a very hard time adding Chrome extensions into the browser. It kept telling me, hey, we are adding it. And you can see the loop here that I'm just kind of scrolling through. You can see here it went on and on kind of forever saying, hey, we are trying, but we can't actually do it. And at the end of all this, I had to hit stop and then I tried hitting continue. Now here's where it gets really interesting. When I hit continue, it actually went through and it said, hey, we are able to add all of these Chrome extensions for you and it listed out a bunch. But when I went to the extension page, there were actually no extensions. So 
the actual Atlas browser completely hallucinated adding the extensions onto the browser. I tried adding them manually, that worked. While the AI features are really cool, I think the browser is lacking a lot of things that make a browser useful, such as the home button, such as a better bookmarking system and drag and drop and better integrated settings. And I may be hard on Atlas because I've been playing around with a browser that I think is better than Atlas and Comet and any other AI browser that I've tried. And I'll have a video on that next week at some point. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to cover AI on a daily basis. Like the video, tell the algorithm you enjoy this type of content. Leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on Atlas? Am I being too tough or am I being fair? Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. You're meant to be.